This is going to be the big number going into tomorrow. If it could just clear out this whole this whole channel here, roughly around 960, it could absolutely stretch, and that's the most important thing. Welcome to Access a Trader, the number one community for those who are committed to taking control of their trading in order to achieve success, profitability, and longevity. Thank you for joining us. Here's Dan Shapiro to help you find your edge, master your process, and own your future. Hey guys, good evening everybody. Welcome to another edition of uh, the Access to Trader.com um, Nightly update show. Hope everybody is doing well. Uh, crazy, crazy tape. Uh, again, the big story today, number of big stories, but definitely uh, the, the biggest story today uh, was the Fed, right? FOMC, um, the expected movement of the Fed was kind of keep rates steady. That's what they did. Uh, they talked about a potential rate hike and, and excuse me if, you, if we've heard this before imminent rate hike this one is march it feels like this imminent rate hike has been going on for three to five years maybe it's me but this one is definitely coming right definitely definitely coming in march and the one thing that um you know we talk about all the time from the traders point of view again you know you, you can there's a million headlines you can you can go read uh, a thousand different blogs exactly uh, what this is going to mean for the Fed, short term, near term, all that stuff. But again, we're, we're talking about it from, from a trader's point of view, from the day-to-day -day, uh, trader's point of view, taking advantage of data. That's the most important thing. So the one thing that we knew uh, going into today's session was that we were well below the 200-day moving average. Uh, we also know that the, the, the rally that was supposed to come yesterday, right, on this whole hammer, started kind of gapping up today because Microsoft came out with pretty decent earnings. The first knee-jerk reaction yesterday if I was when I was recording the video, Microsoft was down 15 bucks by the time this video aired, Microsoft was up $5. Uh this morning was higher and it took pretty much everything with it. We'll segue uh, to Tesla in a second. And as we started going through the morning, uh, we kept on reiterating the point that number one, the, the Qs entered this week down 11% for the year. So if this was the day that we were gonna kind of bounce back and the NASDAQ was gonna be up 500 points, uh, this was the perfect storm. You had the Fed, right? You had the Fed, you had Microsoft earnings, you had anticipation for another big uh, earnings night tonight with Intel, uh, with uh, LRCX, with Tesla, right? With really some pretty big names. So if, if any day was going to be a day that we were going to have this rally back, because remember, think, think about this. If we're down 11% entering this week, and this week has been pretty bad for bulls as well, it wasn't crazy to think that we already, number one, uh, gapped up about a 1.5% pre-market. There, no, there was no reason to believe that we couldn't at least rally back to the five-day moving average. And if you guys remember the video from two nights ago when we had this hammer, that was the goal, right? That was the initial goal. It wasn't supposed to be rally and reclaim the 200-day moving average. It was all about rally, dead cat bounce, at least challenge the five-day moving average at first get above the five-day moving average and then start building towards the 10 and ultimately to the 50 and the problem with that was we got there right we got there and just like everything else for when it comes to technical analysis it doesn't make a difference the majority of times uh what is on the table as far as the geopolitical news uh, what is on the table for earnings, whatever the case may be, stocks trade from supply to supply and demand to demand and supply zones. And this time, this was a five day moving average. Supply zones are where emotional buyers meet technical sellers. And if you look at the 60 minute view and the Qs did it right, the Qs were up 500 points on the day. Well, not the Qs, excuse me, the Nasdaq 100 was up 500 points on the day. Everything looked great. And then real people realized, hey, by the way, we're still in the sell bias market. We're still underneath the 200 day moving average. We got rejected off the five day moving average and yada, yada, yada. If you look at, at what happened here, this is pretty, you know, this is a pretty egregious move down, very disgusting move down. Everything got hit. Once Powell started, stopped speaking, everybody realized, well, back to the same program, yada, yada, yada. The NASDAQ gave back the 500 points, eked out, uh, you know, eked out a very, very small victory, if you can call it that. Uh, it's like winning, uh, it's like winning a tall as dwarf competition. Now, I'm not sure if that's politically correct. If there's a tall as dwarf out there, I apologize in advance no disrespect 
but, but you kind of get the point. And, and now that we're here, so going into uh, tonight, we had some pretty big earnings. You know, years ago, Intel would have been the predominant, you know, like the dominant view. Intel was the market leader. Intel, Cisco, Microsoft, Oracle, you know, they were the behemoths. And you look at Intel's uh, earnings uh, this this evening, you know, stock is down a buck. Really nothing going on there. This is not the leader that it was 15, 20 years ago. There's always a different group of leaders and yada, yada, yada. Things change. We have to change uh, with it. Uh, LAM Research uh, also came out with uh, also came out with earnings, as you can see here, down. Not nothing huge. The initial reaction was down, you know, pretty pretty big. Now it's only down about 20, you know, 20, 20, 30 points. But the big number, right? The big macha, right? As they say in uh, Yiddish, I believe, right? Was Tesla. Everybody, all eyes was on Tesla. We saw some uh, pretty big bets uh, both ways, right? We saw bets. Uh, we saw bets this morning. For the 1050s, at one point today, we saw, it was probably the same person, three consecutive bets, 1.4 million, 1.4 million, 1.4 million on the 950 weeklies, pretty aggressive premium. And the first move of uh, Tesla uh, at the earnings, and they beat top, they beat bottom, uh, they beat everything. The first move, as you can see, went all the way down uh, to all the way down to 880. And then people realize, well, wait a minute, the, the earnings are pretty good. And slowly but surely, it started building. And if you've been following kind of my, my Twitter feed, I was pretty busy. I'm kind of doing the update a little bit late for me. Uh, I'm usually done by the update on five and change. I just kind of finished uh, my last little piece here. But you know, it's starting moving higher. And the longer a stock, especially on earnings, the longer a stock stays above water, especially, uh, especially uh, going red to green, right? Uh, the higher probability it's going to spike. And you can see here what the stock has done uh, ever since recovering. Uh, if you've been kind of watching my my Twitter feed, I've been just kind of literally tweeting prices as, as the stock goes along. Uh, it, it took out this 925 level. Uh, it traded all the way to the supply here into this 950. Now it's trying to rebuild this 950 area. This is going to be the big number going into tomorrow. If it could just clear out this whole this whole channel here, roughly around 960, it could absolutely stretch, and that's the most important thing. Uh, I'm not sure if the, there's a conference call going on or not. I'm assuming there is, but the point is again, this is a special stock, obviously a cold following company, and if we can just get a push tomorrow above this whole channel here, right? This whole 960s channel here, this thing could really, really wake up and maybe test uh, today's high. So that's something uh, obviously on deck for tomorrow, but but the big picture, right? The big picture is what we talk about technically. Uh, you know, the market just can't get up, right? Just can't get up. And that's what she said, uh, and that's what I said, and probably that's what you said. But the point is, it can't get up. It, the last couple of days, uh, has been teetering off this uh, 341 level of support. You see here, back-to-back -back days, uh, the, pull, the, the bulls defend that level. It will be very, very interesting to see if the bulls can defend that level again tomorrow. Obviously, the upside bias, the bulls need to reclaim this 357 level, which is the five-day moving average. If, if there is a natural bias back to the upside, the bulls, before you can get back to the all-time highs, you have to confirm the five-day moving average, and that's exactly where we got rejected today. So we know our little baby line in the sand tomorrow. We know today's high is going to be a macro pivot back for the bulls if they want to reclaim it uh, in the near future. And everything else, the, the most important part is kind of the game plan that we had today was waiting for channels to develop, right? Uh, the balance plays today were super, right? You had balance plays today. Three or four different balance plays today on Tesla, which were really, really good. Uh, a Microsoft, uh, a Microsoft uh, back test into rising support uh, was really, really good as well. And the most important part is when you don't have daily charts that are setting up because the market is such a mess. Well, you have to use alternative ways to kind of you know put stakes in the freezer. And this is because we trade channels, because we trade ranges. This has been nothing new, right? If you're a quote unquote normal trader and you're trading off daily charts, you see what kind of a mess it is. So we are taking advantage of the channels, the upside channels, downside channels, making sure we see the visibility on both. And obviously, if the mess, if the messed up charts on the daily are going to be a big factor in what you do or what not you do, there's going to have to be another alternative. And obviously, channels are, are definitely an alternative. But the most important part is we're not doing anything that's outside of our comfort zone. The channels, whether the market is all messed up or up and down, up and down, 
you know, we're going to trade these channels regardless. So it's kind of business as usual. But the most important part now is everything is exaggerated, right? Everything is exaggerated and the measure of potential is actually bigger. So it's actually a cool, cool thing if you are willing uh, to wait. So, you know, let's talk about today's session. So uh, this was a natural pivot. There was one or two natural pivots here and then everything else was uh, really big bounces. So uh, NVIDIA 234 needs to build. Here was NVIDIA. And it wasn't, there wasn't a lot, as you can imagine, there wasn't a lot of natural pivots, right? Because again, the market's all messed up. But here's the 234, this whole channel here, right? The 234 level, stock went right to the upper part of the, of the channel, all the way up into the 240s, but this is already after uh, this is already after the Fed. The first natural move went all, you know, about a little, little under uh, 237. So nice little pop there on the video. But everything else was literally bounces. Uh, here is Tesla rising support 938, 939. The report tonight, if they could defend this, not only did they defend it, and this is one of, you know, this is, oh, here comes Tesla's ripping right now. Here is uh, one, this is literally one of many uh, bounces we had today, but this was the big one. Uh, rising support, 938, 939. If it builds like a snapback, uh, this is the bounce that went all the way up into the 980s. Huge, huge move there. Uh, Microsoft for experienced traders, 299, 300 for potential dip buy. Uh, it put in a low of 298 and a half. Bounced back, went all the way up to 306 on the Fed. Oh, Tesla is ripping, absolutely ripping right now. Uh, also, again, again, here's all the remounts. We kept on talking about here's different remounts. Uh, 3690 supply, that's where it kind of got up to. Uh, yeah, perfect bounce, right? Perfect bounce on Microsoft. Went up about, about six or so uh, right before the Fed. So big, beautiful bounce there. So the lot of value was going to be in the bounce areas. For tomorrow, you know, I want to watch the overall market. If we start losing today's channels, uh, obviously we're going to turn around and get hit, right? Uh, but if we defend and Tesla somehow wakes everything up, Tesla is absolutely ripping. This is messing me up because I'm not in it on this move here. It's in the 960s now. Ugh. Damn videos costing me money. Anyway, guys, have a great night, everybody. Uh, please, for all you guys, uh, tomorrow there will be um, there will be no video. Tomorrow's Thursday. It's my natural uh, night that I am uh, resting. So for all you guys who are coming in, please uh, please come to Morning Strategy early. We'll obviously get the morning pivots, morning bounces, morning technicals. Ackman also after the close analysis, he purchased uh, 3 million shares of uh, Netflix, right? So obviously uh, he is believing, uh, he is believing uh, in the whole long-term story. Guys, have a great night. God bless. And I will see you all tomorrow.